here we're going to start the second topic data transmission now it is a small chapter but it's, there's a lot of depth to this um, so we're going to take it piece by piece and we're going to start with data packets as you can see we're going to be covering data packets data transmission and the universal serial bus then we're going to move on to error detection before we move on to um, encryption techniques so what are data packets well any information any files that you send over the internet over a network if you're sending emails to people this data is split into smaller sizes um, these things are called packets and they're typically around about 64 kibibytes in this way it's much easier to control it should arrive at its destination a lot quicker so the idea of splitting up data in this way means each packet can be sent along a different route to its destination this would clearly be a great benefit if a particular transmission route was out of action or very busy the only obvious drawback of splitting data into packets is the need to reassemble the data and make sure it's the same as what was sent in the beginning once the receiver receives it. So let's delve a little bit deeper into data packets. We can split data packets up into three parts. Each one contains a header, a payload and a trailer. But what are these things? Well, I've mentioned them across the bottom here if I take this a step further um, the header the header contains the following information the header contains an IP address of the sending device so your computer if you're sending um, a message or, or a file the data of the packet in the header will contain the IP address it will also contain the IP address of the receiving um, the receivers computer it will send the number in the sequence of the particular packet this packet is um, 15 in 50,000 let's say and it will also give us an indication of the size of the packet we said at the beginning it should be around about 64 kibibits but it will give you a more uh, accurate um, file size um, the next thing we need to look at is the payload this is quite simply what is inside the packet what are those 64 kibibits of, of data what do they look like and what is the information stored in this particular data packet the final thing is obviously the trailer uh, the final thing now the trailer contains two important pieces of information um, first of all there's some way of identifying the end of the packet to say you've got everything everything has been received by whoever's receiving the data um, and lastly most importantly some kind of error checking method now I've, I've put down here cyclic redundancy checks CRCs and these are used um, usually um, to check the data um, it involves send the sending computer adding up all the one bits remember the data will be ones and zeros so all the one bits um, in the payload and storing them as an hexadecimal value in the trailer um, once the packet arrives, the receiver, the receiving computer calculates the number of one bits in the payload. The computer then checks this value against the one sent by in the trailer. If the two values match, then there has been no error and there's no um, reason to request the resending of that information. Packet switching. Packet switching is a type of data transmission in which a message is broken up into a number of packets. Each packet can be sent independently from start point to end point over the network. At the destination, the packets will need to be reassembled into their correct order, so obviously using the information that's been sent. Also, the IP addresses that appear in the header enable us to know where exactly the information has been sent to. At each stage in the transmission, there are nodes that contain a router. Each router will determine which route the packets need to take in order to reach um, the final destination. Um, if we consider we've, we have a photograph that we want to send over the internet, and for this example I've, I've, I've got a little diagram here, a little animation, where we're sending the photograph from computer A to computer B, and the, compu and the, um, the photo is split up into, well I've, I've only split it in many, many parts, but in, for this example just into three, pa three different packets. There will be several possible routes for each of these packets to take between the sending computer, computer A, and the receiving computer, computer B. Each stage in the route contains a router. A router receives 
a data packet and, based on the information in the header, decides where to send it to next. Now, suppose our photo has been split up into three packets that have been sent in the following order. Each packet will follow its own path, that's root. The routers will determine the route of each packet. Routing selection depends on the number of packets waiting to be processed at each of the nodes. The shortest possible path available is always selected. This may not always be the shortest path that could be taken since certain parts of the route may be too busy or not suitable. And unfortunately, packets can reach a destination in a different order to that in which they were sent. So there are advantages and disadvantages to this. The advantages would include for, um, for packet switching, there is no need to tie up a single communication line. During a crisis or a disaster, when the public telephone network might stop working, emails and, and texts can still be sent via packet switching by simply rerouting packets. It is relatively easy to expand package usage. A high data transmission rate is possible. And devices of different speeds can communicate. Now, now the disadvantages include packets can be lost and need to be resent. We've mentioned that. This method is not so good for some types of data streams, e.g. for real-time video streaming, where um, packets can um, be received out of sequence and therefore we can lose some frames in terms of what we're receiving, especially live video transmission. There is a delay at the destination uh, whilst the packets are being reordered. And the final thing I want to talk about before we end this video um, is a thing called hopping and hop numbers. Now we may have done seen this in number lines at school or uh, outside in the playground, but in terms of networking, in terms of um, computer usage, um, hopping and hop numbers, it is sometimes, as we've mentioned, sometimes it is possible for packets to get lost because they keep bouncing around from router to router and never actually reach their destination. Eventually the network will just grind to a halt as a number of lost packets mount up, clogging up the system. To overcome this, a method called hopping is used. A hop number is added to the header of each packet, and this number is reduced by one every time it leaves a router. Each packet has a maximum hop number, which has been predetermined to start with. Um, once a hop number reaches zero, then the packet and the packet hasn't reached its destination, then the packet is deleted when it reaches the next router. The missing packet will then be flagged by the receiving computer and a request to resend these packets will be made um, straight away. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. Until next time, thank you very much indeed for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.